G'day folks, welcome to another episode of the Snowy's Camping Show. Joined as usual by myself, Ben, and my colleague, Lauren. How are you today? Good. Good. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel via YouTube or uh, your favourite podcast app. And you can join in on the conversation at the Snowy's Camping Show Facebook group. I always go to get those words mixed yeah. up. Um, and I'm not sure how much conversation we get today because it, it's almost a, we're c- trying to make a boring topic a little bit more interesting, right? Yeah. Because we're going to talk about tent pegs. Well, you say that it's a boring topic, but it's probably one of the most, I say one of the most asked questions or most sort of yeah. not asked questions more so, but, you know, when you run a camping and outdoor store, it's a very, you know, it's one of the top ten inquiries that people get or yeah. need help with. So and we sell a lot of tent pegs yeah. at, at the shop because – People are upgrading surprise. tent pegs. So <laughs> let's try and make some, get some excitement around yeah, tent, yeah, pegs. tent pegs. So, um, so they're, they're a common question mm. that are asked for and they're a, they are a really important element yeah. of your camp setup, not just for your tent but for windbreaks, um, gazebos, shelters, whatever you like. Tent mm. pegs are really important. And you more often than not, if you're buying a really basic tent, you're going to need to consider what pegs come with it to I make sure say, that your campground yeah. stays set up because a lot of the time the pegs you've got aren't suitable for what well, well to put it simply one peg's not going to suit every setup because you're going to have soft ground high ground wet ground rocky ground sandy yeah. ground so you need different <laughs> pegs for different scenarios right i feel like you know back when we recorded this went episode and i was just like why can't companies just Put a little, invest a little bit more into providing a decent mattress with a swag from the get-go. Yep. I sort of feel the same way about okay. tent pegs because I feel like 90% of the time you'll need to replace the supplied tent pegs. Yeah, it's often a token sort of yeah. there's a bag of pegs here um, that are probably all right in kind of that medium to firm ground that doesn't have rocks in it. Yeah, and I can't think about, I can't think of, you know, obviously you re- it's a, it, to reduce costs, but I can't imagine that it would be that much more expensive. When you look at a decent tent peg, it costs maybe like a dollar fifty retail price. It can't yeah. be that much more expensive. Not yeah, and doesn't have to be over the top. No, peg, it doesn't. Just a bit better than what you know. It's a basic, you know, just a, a straight shaft with a bent top on it. I but feel a bit a bit thicker. Yeah, and I feel like if you if you are someone who's going to be doing caravan park camping. And you're going to be on grass, which you know is maintained and watered regularly, and mm-hmm. whatever. For sure, the tent pegs you get for sure. Yep, provided it's not too windy. Yeah, provided it's not going to be yeah. crazy windy. But but other than that, nah, upgrade. Yeah. So the question we get is a common question: is do I need other tent pegs? Do I need to upgrade the tent pegs? And my yep. answer to that usually is, you. It's a good idea to have a handful of other. Tent pegs at least. Yeah, but your, my handful your or your handful? Oh, let's not get technical. What's handful? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like Seriously. one million and for me it's like 12. A million pegs in that hand. <laughs> million of the ones that are supplied with a cheap tent. Just because forget just, about it. Just move on. Never mind. <laughs> you do need to upgrade the pegs, but yeah. you probably at least need to get heavier duty pegs uh, for the guy ropes and yeah. main peg points. You don't need to upgrade to a heavy duty peg for every little loop that's on yeah, the bottom of your fly sheet because they're just sort of holding it in place. Mainly like your four corner ones yep. and all your guy ropes, awning, yep. awnings for sure. Definitely awnings. Yeah. Even um, probably upgrade. Uh, we, um, oh, we haven't. I think we talked about um, – Oh, I can't think of it. Tray springs before in a, yes. in a previous episode. I did have a note here to raise tray springs in okay, this episode I'll because ahead. literally 100% get tray springs. Yeah. 100%. For, yep. For, um, especially for awnings because that fabric will flap around and mm. it just gives it a bit of movement. So, yep. yeah, definitely if uh, at the bare minimum, if you've got, say, a, a four-person tent, you've got four guy ropes and two um, peg points for the awning, at least you get six heavier duty pegs mm. that you can make sure it stays on the ground because yeah. that's going to give it the support it needs. Yeah. And then you can use the other pegs that come with it. Now, not all tents are like this, so I know. Also, when it's super windy, I reckon having mm. two guy ropes off each awning pole is pretty good. Yeah. Yep, definitely. I yeah. um, did that a lot, actually. I've got an Oztent RV5. Yeah. And uh, I got a, a handful, a big handful mm. of extra. You didn't, did you get my joke? I did. Yeah, he didn't laugh. Um, well, two million because you just had two hands, so it was two million. Yeah, because I'm trying to move on. I'm trying to move on. I'm having a serious conversation. Um, 
<laughs> so so I've got a, a heap of extra guy ropes and yeah. when it's really windy, I put, yeah, like two guy ropes off the guy, um, the fly sheet um, awning poles, two guy ropes off the awning at the front mm. just to really peg it down and kind of if, if the wind's swirling around, it just gives it so much more stability. Yeah, it does. So definitely worth it. I'd say, yeah, definitely a whole bunch of spares. And it's pretty sort of, I guess, if you're also if you're looking at, say, you want to buy a tent online and you're not really sure how many pegs you need, it's pretty straightforward to be able to calculate it. You're just like, how many corners does that yep. tent have? How many awning poles does it have? Yep. You know, and potentially I'd go what you'd say one, two, three, you know, if it's a long tent, you'd say maybe four, four or five extras for guy ropes. If you, uh, yeah, yeah minimum, coming off the corners. Yeah, yeah, if it's a bigger family <laughs> tent, sort of six to ten yeah. maybe. I mean, there are a few dollars each, so it's not a huge investment. I'd but probably say 15 to 20, depending on the size of your tent, is yeah. sort of the average number that you need. Yep. They're, no, not all tents are like this, though. Um, I know my Oz tent, mm. all Oz tents, come with good pegs, decent pegs, and I've, yeah. I've – I think I've bent a few over the – I've used it a lot though and driven it into pretty hard ground, but mm. they're actually pretty good. They're a thicker – obviously a better grade of steel and a thicker shaft on it. And I think like the turbo tents and some of those better sort of higher end tents. I'm thinking more like the, the, the Coleman um, instant up, Austral instant up, sort of more of those Just not general. entry level but middle of the range, like yep. very accessible tents. They're obviously – they're at a really great price point because mm. they're so accessible for families but – you know, with that often will come the need for you to upgrade the pegs. Yeah. So if you've got a, if you're spending what, three, four hundred dollars yep. on, a, on a tent, just factor in an extra 20 bucks. Yeah. And get a reasonable handful of yeah. extra pegs to make sure it stays anchored to the ground. They have now, different, go. No, 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 you're all right. I was just going to say, and they come in, often will come in different lengths as mm. well. And I, the sort of length seem to range, <clears throat> sorry, i got a bit of a frog in my throat. Um, they so, sort of seem to range from about the 20 centimetre to 35 centimetre mark. I reckon all the po- po- poles, pegs, pegs we've got are about 30 centimetres. Yeah. yeah, that 300 mil. I think and, 30 and is a good We pretty much use them for everything. Yeah. You don't really need longer than that if I think if you're using it particularly as really muddy ground or yeah. soft ground or as bordering on sand. But then if you go into sand, then you really need to use a um a, I might, might be jumping ahead here. We'll yeah, talk about like sand, a sand a bit later. Mm. We'll talk about the differences there. Um, because we've kind of summarized um well you you've summarized here the three kind of different types yeah. of pegs, haven't you? Yeah. Um before we do that though, we should mention if you've got pegs, you need something yeah. to drive it in the ground. I right? do this is <clears throat> Do you, because I mean, you can get mall- mallets, like tent peg mallets and whatever, mm. but they just seem to be the polypropylene or polycarbonate or whatever they are, um, or most of the sort of peg mallet camping ones you can get. Mm-hmm. I'll just use a good old hammer. Yeah, I reckon, I reckon those ones you talk about, they're lightweight and they're kind of indestructible. They're easy to carry around. Kids can't hurt themselves too much if they're playing with it. Do they actually um, work? They, they do, but if we take that step back to that, Caravan park set oh, up yeah, where okay. the ground's maintained. They work really well in that instance. But if you're trying to drive, a, you know, a large V stake into yeah. hard clay ground or rocky ground or something, yeah. there it just doesn't work. So I carry like a I don't know how many just kilos normal, there's one point two five kilo like a we call it like a mash hammer or a mallet or whatever it is, just a little short mallet. Um, that, what is it got like a big blockhead on it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I think uh, we've just got a. Actually, I think we might have a mallet as well. I thought we had like an Irwin hammer or something, but I think it's a mallet now you say that. Like I mean, a little the, the hammer's mallet. Just, as, just as useful. The mallets just give you a mm. bigger sort of head to, to hit with. So that's what I carry with me. It's yeah. heavier. By the time you talk about all these extra tent pegs and these extra, this, this mallet, it's, it's a fair bit of extra weight, but it is an important element to have to make sure your accommodation it's, doesn't well, blow away. Well, it's literally so. your, um, like your, your cornerstone of camping really. Yeah. Because if you can't. Hammer pegs into the ground, you can't have a tent up. Yeah, or well, you got to line it all night so it doesn't blow away. Yeah. But I've used um, – <coughs> excuse me, both got frogs in their throat Yeah, no, today. it's weird. Um, I've used the – well, both the, the plastic ones and the rubber ones as well. Mm. And I don't, I don't quite understand the rubber side of it. I don't um, understand the rubber. The, t- I thought they were paving mallets, you know, because you yeah, need to hit like bricks it. and pavers yeah. and whatever, but yeah. they're not a tent peg thing. You can still get it in the ground, but it takes twice as many strikes to get it there. And I reckon I did have one somewhere floating around that was used for that and it just was munched on the end. Yeah. It just I think ended I've, up being all like. 
think I've destroyed one at some yeah. stage. I think I've tried just to use destroy a hammer. it. So, yeah, just use a hammer. Hammer yeah. or a mallet, easy. Yep. So, so, yeah, the standard tent pegs, well, I was going to say they're really good for sort of turf camping or camping where you know there's not going to be really hard ground or rocks or whatever. But having said that, we only use standard tent pegs. Well, we do have other ones, but f- 95% of the time we just use Gal steel yeah. key head pegs anywhere we go, even mm-hmm. if it's rock, you, they'll always go in the ground Yep, because those pegs are bloody amazing. Yeah. Oh, that you're talking about the key, the key so that's a pegs. super peg key head one. Super peg. Super so, peg. Every, everything we're going to talk about is mostly super peg because super peg are great. And if you know by the pegs. name, yeah. super peg, they make super, super pegs. Super pegs, wow. Well. You, you've been waiting, <laughs> what, since how long we've been going for? Like 10 minutes to say that or something? <laughs> no, I haven't. But, so the, when we talk about standard pegs, so there is a standard that's just got a straight shaft and then the top's basically just bent over to yeah. turn it into a like a number seven, yeah. really. That's a standard, that's the cheapest way to make a peg. But what you're referring to is the super peg one, which has got, they call it a key shape, but the the top of it's kind of bent as such so that when you hit the, the top of the peg, it's kind of lined up with the shaft it, of the it's peg. It's just basically... Um when, yeah, the direction of force is going straight down the shaft of the peg instead of off to one side, off to one side, which is what is usually causes your pegs to bend yeah. and things like that. Yeah. Um, they're literally indestructible. Like we've got yeah. a whole bunch of them and I reckon we've had them for easily five years. Yep. And there might only be one or two in there that are a little, little bit bent. Yeah. Okay. So I've got some. And I- they're boss. <laughs> Big fan of Super Peg. I, no, I've got some yeah. of a similar shape. I don't know if they came with the Oz tent, but they have a similar concept in that the top kind of has a bit of an S shape, so it doesn't oh, yeah. just go straight to the top. It bends out so that that where the where the hammer hits the the peg is kind of central. Mm. But I think that is a really important element to look for in a peg. If you're going to invest in extra tent pegs, it might cost a few cents more to get this curved top on it, but. You, I mean, you're saying yeah. for sure well, that like it's going to last the, twice I've had as them long. for years. We've never had to replace them. We've mm. never, you know, broken them, bent them, nothing. They're yep. just – and, yes, they are a bit more expensive per peg, but they are 100% worth it. Just $3. You go and bend another one that costs you $2. Yeah. And then you're buying that again and you've spent exactly. twice as much anyway. Now, and they're th- about an eight, eight millimeter shaft, I reckon, which is a good kind of all-rounder. You can get really thick you ones as well. You can get really thick ones. I think the thicker you go, the harder it is to get in the ground. To get in the ground. Yep. So I think um, the other thing to add with that is that if you do want to upgrade your pegs, like you were saying before, you don't have to do – all of your pegs all in one go. Yeah. If you, you know, and if you are wanting to get pegs out of three or four dollars, they're a bit more expensive. Maybe just get five at a time and yep. then, you know, the next camping trip get an extra five and and yeah. do it that way. It's not yep. like you have to drop fifty bucks on or more on pegs straight away. No. Um <clears throat> get four good ones rather the, than six cheap ones. Yeah, yeah, the key. And most people I know that have been camping with us will only get key head pegs now. And I'm sure that anybody out there who has key head pegs will be with me in yep. saying that they are like the They're god of designed. pegs. They're yeah. amazing. <clears throat> but yeah, so you can get but you can get ones that are just straight up steel. You can get pegs that are galve. You can get pegs that like like you were mentioning have a slightly different design in how they direct just the, the force it, just yeah. to help protect it. Yep. Um but all of those ones, and I think they are suitable for loads of different ground types. Should we touch before we go ahead on gal versus just straight steel? Go for it. Now I you can touch on it because <laughs> I don't literally know. don't really. know. I think it's worth getting gal, uh, okay. mainly because I've used tent pegs in scenarios where they've been in the ground for a, like not just overnight, but they've oh, like a week, something stuff, maybe a week, yeah. Mm-hmm. And you immediately start to notice the, really? the pitting on the – if it's in wet ground in particular, mm. you immediately start to notice the pitting on the shaft of the peg. So okay. I think this is one of those things, again, where you spend a little bit more for galve, but it's, it's worth it. it over the time that you have it, it's still going to be – like yeah. that, that's only a minute amount, yeah. that, that galvanised, um, you know, steel or galvanised coating on, yep. the, on the peg. So. But, you know, they're going to do the same job. There's no difference in how they perform. It's mm. just longevity, whether mm. you go the galve, which is a silver thing, or just un- untreated steel, which is usually looks a bit greyer and goes brown. It yeah. starts to get oxidation, oxidization and rust. And it also creates a rougher shaft. Mm-hmm. 
and then that becomes harder. harder Not so to much driving in, but harder friction. to pull out. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. guess if you if you do year round camping in all loads of different kind of places, go for Gauv, go for yep. that extra, you know, thirty centimeter. Yep. Long peg. If you're someone who camps in fairer weather and you mostly stick to caravan parks or places where you know the ground's going to be softer, you don't necessarily need to go galve and you can probably get away with the tent pegs you got. Maybe just upgrade your awning pegs or something like that. You'd yep. probably be fine with the 20 to 25 centimeter lengths. Probably. Yeah. I think so. Now, I didn't think we'd be able to talk this much about um, tent pegs, but this is a. Uh I'm more involved than I thought, but let's move on to drillable pegs because this is a uh, something that um, I think started out on Shark Tank, didn't it? The hex pegs were the. I think so. Well, I don't know if they're the first ones because there's probably a similar thing in in Bunnings, largely in the form of just Do a you know coach what? screw. Guarantee, I've seen so many people just using coach screws. Yeah, it's yeah. the same sort of concept, but yeah. hex pegs are a, and a few other ones are a kind of refined version of that. Mm-hmm. I suppose they've got hooks and stuff on the top, but they're yeah. quite an. Ex- if you buy the actual ones that are labelled as drillable pegs, they're quite an expensive way about it. And they are. I they're can't like sort of it. seven, eight, nine bucks, I reckon. Yeah, they're not cheap. They're but not cheap. I can see a use case in certain scenarios, and I bring my cousin into this picture here, and he's got a really crook back, and yeah, right, for okay. him to get, he's got a caravan, so for him to get down and peg out his ground sheet and the awning and everything for his caravan is a, is a lot of work, and he's in pain before his holiday starts. Yeah, but if he course. can take a drill and these pegs and just put them straight in the ground, that's actually a really good point. I never considered mobility or accessibility issues. Well, yeah, when so you're I talking about drillable tent pegs, makes perfect sense. It when makes you think perfect of it like sense that. now. So think of it. it's an investment for him because mm. he he come and he, he bought some from Snowy's and it was quite a quite a bit. I think yeah. he probably bought ten or twenty odd pegs. So yeah. it's a decent amount of money, but for him, that's a small amount of money for him to be able to enjoy, keep enjoying what he yeah. wants to do. So and they um, last a long time. Like I personally yeah. don't have those those hex pegs, and again, Super Peg do a version, but hex pegs is is the main brand. Um, I don't know anybody with those pegs that doesn't froth off them and no. think they're amazing and just th- buy more. I think they're good if you're in limestone or really hot, <coughs> excuse me, really hard grounds. Yeah. Where driving a peg into the ground is hard, but drilling it in is a bit easy. I guess I question sometimes how much damage that's causing. If everyone drills a peg into a limestone yeah. coast, is it causing, I don't know, opening up another whole topic there. Don't but um, But there's also plastic versions, which are good for softer ground. And I'm and not they, a fan of the plastic ones. Oh, they're probably easy to break. The only reason why I'm saying that I'm not a fan is because I don't think I've heard any positive feedback on them really at all. Probably once again goes back to if it's soft ground, if it's caravan park type ground. Yeah, it, goes it might just easy, be it works fine. individual use case and whether yeah. or not people are using them appropriately. But yeah. I think they'd probably be better on sort of super soft ground and sand, like you say. Yeah. But. I think the only downside with the drillable pegs is then you obviously need to take a drill, which is yeah. a battery pack drill. I mean, you can also obviously have a socket set if your yeah. battery goes flat. But Quite a bit of work. Socket set to get a temp peg in is a lot more work than you just really push down on it as well. having a dr- Yeah, do you yeah. know what I mean? It's a lot trickier. So you are sort of adding that extra weight and mm. needing to take make sure your battery's you know, um, full and if it goes flat and you know what yeah, I'm saying? extra to carry. Not, um, not for me. But I have heard of people using them for gazebos and people doing market stalls and things like that that are on not like proper asphalt but really compact car mm. parks and things like that that just straight drill them straight into the ground yeah. to hold their gazebos down. So they definitely have an, a good use. Yeah, I've heard of events. I think it was a jamboree here in South Australia that um, – they drilled pegs into the ground because it was so hard. They couldn't drive anything yeah, in. Right. So someone was just all day on a on a probably a two forty volt drill just pulling pegs into the ground. So they um but yeah, they also come in different lengths and with hook tops and all sorts yeah. of different things. Now just on this, I think R V Daily is a mag magazine yep. and they have a blog post. Um I think it's something along the lines of are drillable. 10 pegs worth or whatever. Okay. And there's just a cool YouTube video that that they did on it where they oh, okay. set up the winch of their four-wheel drive. Oh, um, I did see that. And with like, yeah, like a little load meter or something and yes. then a chain and it was really cool, like interesting yeah. to watch them do it. Um, And so, yeah, that was good to see the different 
range of tent pegs in action mm. and whatever. So check that out if um, did, you're at all interested in. Did they have the blue screws in there? Because the blue screws are a blue variation. Ones. Yeah, that with the long shaft. Now yeah, they're, they they're a variation of a screwing peg, but for sand, right? That, mm-hmm. that you drill down into the sand, yeah. and they kind of have more strength when you're pulling in the same direction as the. Yes, my only gripe, however, RV Daily, if you're listening to this, <laughs> is that throughout the process of the video, you watch it and you'll see that they're hammering in this angle iron peg, right? And they've used cuts to the dude hammering in the angle iron peg and at the beginning he's like getting started and then the video progresses and then finally by the end of the video he's hammered in this this angle iron tent peg, right? And obviously the point is to be like, look how bloody long it's taking me to hammer in this peg. Meanwhile, I've tested all of these other drillable pegs and whatever, and I totally get it, but I want to see the load test on that angle iron peg. You just love angle iron pegs. I do. That's your thing. But seriously. We'll get to that. Yeah, it's going to be a segue to the next <laughs> section. But seriously, I would be super curious to see. Did they not test that one? They didn't. Why were they driving into the ground then? Just to be like, look how long it's taken us. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, right. Which was, <laughs> which was, you know, a cute, cute extra for the video. And I thought it was like, you know, pretty funny. But I was like, hang on a minute. That's an angle iron peg. Not sure they Don't were going those for pegs. the cute on that. But anyway, let no, us know you, if you, if you yeah. did test it. Lorena B. Kane, she's a um, angle iron peg fan, which takes I'm us a, on to our next I'm a massive category. angle iron peg fan. Right. I am obsessed with those angle iron pegs. More so than the key head super <sighs> peg? Ones. Look, it's different use scenario, right? Same, same, cause, but different. Because this is moving on to sand pegs, which mm. are a wider peg. So mm-hmm. it, soft sand, you put a normal peg in it, it, it's easy to pull out. So a sand peg needs to be longer and wider so there's more surface area to pull against the sand so it doesn't pull out as easy. So mm. there's a bunch of different versions. Of the ones you often see are those big plastic ones yeah. that kind of got three sides. Do you know what the difference between polypropylene and polycarbonate is? Uh, because I don't. Well, Apparently one's a bit more brittle than the yeah. other, but why so, would you choose one over the other? I, I don't actually know, to be honest with you. I, um, that's a good question. I might have a research on that and we'll see if we can get some conversation happening on the uh, Facebook group. But yeah. I do know that poly um, polycarbonate is more brittle, right. so you've got to be careful with how you, um, if you're smashing it with a massive hammer, mm. you might break it. Um polypropylene is like the universal good plastic for everything and it's yeah. got a bit more flex to it, yeah. I suppose. So um, I do the same job. I think polypropylene is cheaper. Why you would choose polycarb over polypro, I don't know, possibly because of the rigidity of it mm. so it doesn't flex at all in certain ground. But I might actually have a bit of a look into that to see what – I think I have looked before but I don't think i come up with any conclusive kind yeah. of reason why you choose one over the other. And if it was me, I'd probably just go polypropylene because it's flexible and it's somewhat indestructible. Mm. Um, but don't quote me on that. And be interested to hear if anyone else has had experience, experience with, with, with either, either on what your recommendations are. I, I want to do, my, I wanna do my own test on do pegs you? now. All right. With like load testing, or you just yeah. want to go to, you just want to get both. on it with a hammer. Both, both, <laughs> both. <laughs> um, but yeah, angle iron pegs. Which they would be, I mean, we use them in sandy conditions and even down at the beach, but they're awesome for super wet, muddy conditions. Mm -hmm. You'd probably, even if you were doing like high country, Victorian high country with a bit Mm -hmm. of snow, I reckon they'd be amazing. So angle iron, what we mean there is a 90 degree piece of metal and it's just cut sharp at one end. Flat on the top and has usually got a little it's got hook like a little welded, hook on it. welded yeah. into the right angle. They're heavy. They just heavy duty. They're heavy duty, but they will never fail. Like literally never fail. I've never not been able to get them into the ground, except for when we were away on the Air Peninsula and there was limestone. But other than that, I've never not been able to get them into the ground. As I said, we have a couple in our, um, you know, we've just got one of those beach shelters that everyone thinks are notoriously rubbish because they fall over all the time. Because they use the temp pegs that came with it? Yeah, or just any other kind of sand pegs, really. But you know that you know just the two poles with a cross beam, yep. and it's that huge like an rectangle. A-frame. Yeah, yep. and you just sort of yep. yeah, you know the ones. Yep, classic. So we've got a couple of the angle iron pegs in there. And we've had them in there for years and at the beach, wet sand, they've got a little bit of rust but they still go strong. Then 
not an issue. I've literally been down, you know, Adelaide beaches in the afternoon at like 4 p.m. and everyone's shelters are blowing away. away. Yeah. Doesn't even move. Yeah, okay. Doesn't move. They're like insane. Yeah. Okay. And same when, you know, we've gone away up the river and a huge storm has come over. I think I showed you the video of like where yeah. our fire pit got flooded and everything yeah, in yeah. like 10 minutes. Nothing moved. Yeah, okay. So they're heavy. So they're the ones you'd want to use on those main peg points of your yeah. shelter. They can be a bit of a pest to get out though. Oh, yeah. You know, they can take a bit of effort to get them twist out. Them, right? Around one you can kind of twist in the hole and then mm. get it out. But yeah. with, an eye, with those ones, you, it's like getting you a star dropper out. You've sort of got to pull wiggle and it. do a little wiggle at the same time. Mm. Yeah, it's exactly like trying to get a star dropper out. Yeah. But so that that's the only downside. But, again, it's like having a star dropper so nothing is moving. Yeah, And okay. combined with Tracer Springs, woo. Rock solid. Rock solid. So Super Peg do a angle iron peg and there's another brand uh, called- Hampton do Hampton. an aluminium one and Super Peg do a- Is Hampton, Hampton's not a angle iron, is that curved one? Hamp- talking about? There's an aluminium yeah, one. Yeah, Hampton do a curved one. They also do a um, angle iron one, oh, but okay. I think their angle iron one is aluminium, but Super Peg do the galve. Right, okay. So aluminium obviously going to be a softer metal. If mm. weight's a real consideration for you and you're not really yeah. building into super hard ground, then you get some weight benefits by going aluminium. Um, the curved well, the al- one that I was is talking aluminium, about. Well, al- al- I'm gonna, aluminium. Yeah, but or, this is going to make me sound like an idiot, I'm sure. But does aluminium rust? No. It well, corrodes. It right. corrodes. So, uh, so would that be better to use at the beach? Well, salt water corrodes everything, right? If I mean, rinse it off after you use it. Yeah. It probably would be. Better um, than Gal. Well, we're using the Galv one. And as I said, they look a bit rusty. Like they've got a bit yeah. of that orange sheen, but they're still going strong. But would al- aluminium, alley ones be better? Um, possibly. Beach, do you um, but you still want to rinse. If you don't rinse salt water off aluminium, you'll get yeah. like um, corrosion and stuff okay. happening over time. It's the same deal with salt water, it just kills everything. So give it a rinse. But. Um, and they'd be lighter as well. They're lighter, yeah. I know Hampton have some curved ones, which are the a snow good sand option. Ones? Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we kind of will do hiking um, tent pegs another day, but they're kind of cross the bridge a little bit, those ones. They're a lightweight camping one, but they're also kind of a heavier duty hiking tent. But if uh, – Hiking sorry. Ping. But if you hit those really hard with a big mallet, you're just going to destroy them. Yeah, so, right, okay. Um, yeah because they just kind of curve over at the top. So you start hitting it, it just keeps curving and you destroy it. So okay. the heavy-duty camping scenarios, key head pegs or those with it with a bit They're of an my S winner. on the top. They're 100% my winner. The rock solid, the um, angle iron pegs, you, you swear by them. So they're the only two that I have in my kit. Mm-hmm. What do you have in your kit? Um, I've got, well, if I was to replace them, I'd get those super peg key head pegs. Once, but you've but got, I've got the original, similar with okay. the, which which aren't straight. I've probably got a few of the straight bent ones, like the mm-hmm. number seven shaped ones, mm-hmm. but they're mostly got a bit of an S bend on top. I reckon they're the ones that came with the Oz Ten, and they're they're pretty good. Like okay. the the head has kind of bent over on a few of them, mm-hmm. but I've built them into all sorts of ground, and they're still quite functional. I've still got a big bag of functional pegs from when yeah. I had it, and I've owned that tent for a good number of years now. Do you and, use what sand pegs do you use? Do you use sand pegs? Um, I used to carry a handful of uh, no, nothing specific in terms of brand. I've just accumulated – I've got a heap of pegs. I've just accumulated yeah. over the years. So I do carry a handful of, of um, pegs. Usually if I'm taking a beach shelter, I've got four like – bit like um, – I don't think they're polycarbonate. I think they're polypropylene. Mm. Smaller, not the really big tent pegs but just smaller ones because with a um, – with a beach, you can also do things like bury, like tie your Yeah, I was going to say your, your shelter's got that, those huge sandbags that yeah, you bury. Yeah, sandbags you bury or a, a rock, tie the tie the guy up around a rock and bury the rock. Yeah. Like there's other ways around it mm. that you can um, you can anchor your, your shelter to the ground. Yeah. Um, I saw um, something on a, a – it was a YouTube video for a guest. We we'll hope soon mm. uh, leave it at that. Yeah. But um, they used uh, two rocks – in a scenario where you can't, like if you're just camping on a rock shelter, mm-hmm. you can just use a small rock and a big rock to kind of anchor your, yeah. your tent. So, yeah, that's um, we'll bring that up in the future episode. But I thought that was a really cool idea to use no tent pegs, probably more for hike tents though. Yeah, yeah, for camping, sure. Camping tents because the wind on a camping tent is just going to probably turn those rocks into projectiles. So. Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> Have I ever told the story? This is totally going completely off topic about when I was – um, hiking in Finland and somebody had a reindeer 
walk <laughs> walk over and crash over their hiking tent whilst they were in it in the middle of the night. Oh no. All I'm right. just thinking of projectile rocks. Just made me think about yeah, this reindeer. giant reindeer. I thought it was crashing over had a reindeer and falling in. Like it was their yelling, reindeer. But. Going, oh my God. And there was a reindeer tangled <laughs> up in the tent and the person inside <laughs> under the reindeer and the tent. And it all just somehow worked out fine. Well, <laughs> so we managed to talk for 30 minutes about tent pegs. And I thought we'd be gone for five minutes going, yeah. oh, what are, where, how far are we going to go here? But We always talk um, a lot more than we expect. Probably to. more information than you need, yeah. Mm. Um, any last tips? I think we've covered it all. No, I think we have. I'd be interested to hear other people's thoughts on what they have in their setup. Yeah, what I'd has love and to hasn't know what, what, yeah, what has not hasn't worked and what people's go-to go are. Yeah. Because for me, obviously, Anguai and Keyhead, I'll never look at another tent peg again. Yeah. Let Tell us, us about yours. On the Snowy's Facebook Facebook group. Snowy's Camping Show Facebook group. Got the words mixed up again. Yeah. Jump on there. Let us know. Um, we'll be on there joining in on the conversation. I'd love to hear your thoughts, but that's all there is for today's episode. Thanks for joining us. As we said before, subscribe on YouTube or via your favorite app. And we'll see you on next week. Next week. See you guys. Bye.